Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I received my Kickstarter copy of War for America, the American Revolution, 1775 to 1782 from Compass Games. This is actually my second uh, game from Compass I backed on Kickstarter recently, mainly because the this is a game that I'm very interested in. The other one was Barbarian at the Gates, Barbarians at the Gates. I'm very interested in this one, but you know, the price on the Kickstarter was like, I think it was $62 and then there was about $12 in shipping. So to get a big game like this for that cheap of a price before it got marked up, um, I felt like I needed to do that. So anyway, back to this on Kickstarter. This is designed by Gilbert Collins. He's been working on this for several years. In fact, I uh, posted an interview with him on the blog sometime in 20, early 2020, just after the pandemic um, started. So this game looks fantastic, very interested in it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over and you're going to hear, well, you didn't hear it necessarily. I was pretty careful, but the counters on the sprues were included in kind of a plastic envelope. And I opened the box because I wanted to just kind of look over things before I shot the video. Took those counters out of that plastic envelope, and man, they almost all fell out of the sprues. So I always feel like that's good. They're easy to remove when I clip them. I'm not going to have to risk tearing one or, or ripping it apart. So you, you'll see that when I open it, the counters are kind of everywhere. Uh, I wanted to show you the back of the box because this is a unique American Revolutionary War game. I'm going to read this one paragraph to you. War for America attempts to show the conflict from the British perspective and how a rebellion turned into a world war. This is a big game. I wanted to show you this down here. Number of players is two. Solitaire suitability is high but I'm gonna point you to right here. Average time to play is 20 hours or less for the full campaign. Now there is a shorter scenario which starts in 1778 and only takes about eight to 10 hours uh, to play. But this is a game that I want to, I wanna understand it, I wanna read the rules, I wanna make sure Alexander and I give it a full play and I'm talking the full playthrough. I wanna do every single turn one, because I really like the subject, and two, to me, the game looks very, very interesting. And I'll show you the maps, uh, which I just think are fantastic. But a great looking game. This is a nice box. This is a two inch box, uh, but it's a little thicker style two inch box. Not quite as thick as uh, Barbarians at the Gates, but it's still very nice. I, I am not a fan of the art on the front. I think the picture is good, but it, it's very pixelated, I think, almost as if they copied it off of, I, I don't know, a computer screen, put it on there, and it, it just doesn't look sharp. Now, it looks all right. I, I just think it maybe, I don't know, just wasn't necessarily for me, um, but that's a nitpicky thing. I, I think this is a quality production that you're going to get your money out of. Uh, it's it's definitely worth it. So let's go ahead and open the box. Lots of content in here. I'm going to show you the cards first. So I kind of pre-opened uh, the deck of cards. Very nice cards. They're actually a little thinner than I would like. Um, just because you, you play this game a couple of times, and to me there's going to be quite a bit of wear and tear on these cards. I feel like they should have uh, should have been a bit thicker. Um but there are, there are different types of cards. There's some events. You can see here's an extended march. Uh, six nations, we'll talk a little bit about that. There's actually a play aid um, that kind of kind of mentions that. But you can see the British player activates one tribe of his choice. And then both players roll to activate all, <coughs> excuse me, all other tribes. So there are Native Americans involved in this game. And I always think that's very cool. Uh, because they were involved uh, in this conflict, particularly on the borders uh, to the west. And, and I just think that's a story that's important uh, to tell. 
So you'll notice about these Six Nations cards, you'll see there's a British and an American, or Patriot. This, these cards are marked as 1778. Um, I think there are some more, and I'll, I'll look for that here in just a second. But, but they come out in different years, so you can expect to see those different cards. Well, I'm not, I'm not finding them. But you can expect to see some of those same types of cards later on uh, in the game. But there's all kinds of events, uh, you know, as you read through there, these, I think they look very cool. A very concerted effort, I think, to make the historiosity of this conflict come out. In fact, I've got a great story about the world turned upside down. This was actually the song that Cornwallis's troops played as they marched out of Yorktown to surrender to the Patriots and the French. They played the song, The World Turned Upside Down. To, to me, that's a very ironic song. Obviously, they were defeated. They knew that things were going to change within the empire, and they were playing that song, I think, unironically, but interestingly enough, it was very ironic. Um, one time at a conference, just another side story, sorry, I was sitting in a conference for city and town managers in Iowa. This was 20 years ago uh, at the start of my career. One of the questions was asked, who knows the song that was played at the surrender of the British at Yorktown? I raised my hand and I said, the world turned upside down. Obviously, I was correct. Everyone in that audience kind of turned around to look at me and I felt very uh, conscientious at that, at that point, a little sheepish about having uh, said that. But anyway, the guy said that he had never received an answer uh, for that question. So I was proud to give him that answer. Uh, but these are kind of like event cards. They happen uh, and, and cause different effects throughout the game. Uh, you, you will notice that there are battle cards that are used in the battles. They, you can get extra dice uh, to those rolls. Kind of an interesting uh, element. So, so I think there's a lot of neat mechanics that are included in this game. If you're interested, I published that interview with Gilbert on the blog. You can read that. A couple of nice black and white die. These are kind of compasses standard Dice, I've got these in almost every Compass Games game that I've ever bought. The first thing that we'll look at here is the rule book and then the playbook. Uh, you know, nice thickness of paper. The rule book is actually 20 pages. So the back page is page number 20. One thing I really like about it that I no noticed immediately was it has a very good index. So as you're going through the sequence of play, you can look up, oh, I need to know more about forts. 17.5, you can turn to 17.5 and, and figure that out. Uh, fairly thick and dense rule book. Uh, there's a lot of text, although they do have some examples and drawings showing how things work. But this is a very dense uh, rule book, I feel like. You can tell the writing is very small. Uh, there's a lot of words on each page, so I'm, I'm not sure this is going to be a game that I'm going to pick up and immediately play, although they do have some pretty decent play aids. I think this one might, uh, might take a while. It does have a playbook, so that is going to help considerably. And actually, Gilbert did a series of YouTube videos that talk about multiple aspects of the game, so very, very helpful. So here's the playbook. It's 12 pages, has a bibliography has some designer notes at the end uh, of the of the thing. Has a gazetteer, uh, which if you don't know, gazetteer is simply an index for maps. That's where you're going to find uh, the different names, uh, and sometimes they'll tell you like where they're located. Or, but that that is not the case here. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's a there's a little bit example, uh, an example of different things: fortresses, forts, de fort defenses, assaults. Uh, commands, land movement with and without leaders, example of a land combat. And you can see there's some good little pictures there to better help you understand that. You know, I feel like there a lot of war games are trying to do this to help people better understand how to play the games, hoping to get them off the shelf and onto the tables. So playbook, very indispensable. Um, let's go ahead and dive into some of the play aids. I'm going to pull all the plates out and I'm going to rest them on the box there. 
So these are kind of army cards. They're single-sided. And you can literally stack. You're going to have a counter on the on the board, but you can stack the different uh, units here in these armies and use them in that way. Uh, the army stacks can get pretty thick and pretty tall, so these cards are going to help that. You can see each has uh, three of those armies: Washington's army, Army of the South, and the North, and then you same uh, the same for the British, the Royal Army, and the Army of the North, North and the South. So those are kind of useful, uh, at very similar to like a, a, an off box or off map box. Then you've got five different play aids here. I'm not going to go through each one of them. Uh, this one is single sided. That one's single sided. This one is double sided, double sided, and double sided. So the most important one. This is the sequence of play, so you can get a kind of kind of a up close look at it. I was looking through this earlier. It looks very, uh, very well written. I think it's going to help you remember the different aspects. It's also got the case uh, and rule uh, text there, so you can really quickly refer to those rules. Uh, but you can see each each step of the game is pretty uh, pretty involved. Um, and that's fine. I like a good involved game. Here's a look at the various charts and the tables. Uh, there's kind of a, a guerrilla tactics table, a standard battle table. There's battle modifiers that you're going to add in. Uh, there is a box or some, some information for fleet combat. Here is a talk about how you can levy colonial continental troops. You'll notice there's a New England with the different states and locations. You're going to roll some die, and that's how many units you're going to be able to conscript uh, or levy. You got New England, Middle States, and Tidewater, and then the Deep South. You have British uh, transport capacity. That goes up and down by year. Loyalist and Militia Muster. There you've got a table for that. Militia Maximums. A Siege Result table on the right. And then Loyalist SPs. So very involved play aids. The rest of these... Uh, this is like a, it's a British reinforcement chart, and then you have a colonial reinforcement chart. So if you look at it, it just tells you in 75, this is what you're going to get. In 76, the different periods, you're going to get remove gauge, promote how, transfer Burgoyne and Clinton, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to the end at 1782. Those are single-sided, very useful. You're going to keep those out and make sure you get the, the units and the troops that you need. Here you've got some different setup start positions for both the British and the Patriots, uh, different maximums for SPs. Here on the back, you've got a terrain effects chart, fortresses, British and colonial uh, spaces. British are red, colonial obviously is, is blue. You have different elements like ports, coastal spaces, roads, trails, rivers, oceans, colony borders, uh, etc. You even have a Caribbean special rules because there's an entire Caribbean map in this game, which is very, very cool, I feel like. Then you have the Six Nations cards. And remember, we read that you're going to be able to activate uh, different tribes. So this is a process, how you do that and when you do it, what the winter turn rules are for those native uh, troops. And then you've got foreign entry cards as different countries come in and out different rules for that. So a lot of different player aids, I think that are very helpful now. There are, let's go to the counters. There are uh, two and a half counter sheets and you can see it's a mess. And that's because I opened it and then kind of threw it back in. These are really clipped or cut very well. They're not pre-rounded. You're gonna have to cut these out or uh, trim them. I use a counter clipper. Uh, but here's a look at some of these counters. These are British ships. I think you have the Spanish and Netherland boats and then some French boats uh, there on the right. So there's an example of some of those counters. These are just some control markers and other, uh, other fleets. You've got Lake Navy markers there, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, so yeah, a lot of, of different types of counters. So I feel bad. I'm not going to be able to really clearly... And these are just falling out like crazy. Uh, but here's a look at some of the different uh, the different units. So these are loyalists. I'm going to use this as a pointer. 
You've got loyalist markers here. These are all loyalist. These are British uh, units, regulars. You've got your irregulars, your, your Indian tribes. These are Mohawk. You have your French regulars there. You have some different leaders. Uh, here you have some Spanish troops and then some, uh, some uh, British and American or Patriot leaders there. Uh, you have some more leaders there at the bottom. Here are some German or Hessian mercenaries that you're going to use. So there's a lot of different types of counters. I think they look pretty good. They're simple. I'm not going to say that these are overly complex uh, uh, counters. Here you've got some Patriot militia, the green, the light green. I think everything else I've kind of showed you. There's some control markers, lines of communication, siege, etc. I, I wish they hadn't fallen apart so much, but there's a look at the these British counters. I think they're really cool, and you can see they've got some big numbers, right? I think the Patriots aren't quite that big. Uh, here's some here's some Continentals. You've got twos and fours. Let's see how high their numbers go. They they do go up a little higher. They go up to to 21, 23, 24. So they do have some larger number of troops uh, as they as they move on. So I'm going to kind of move those counters to the side. We'll put that box over there. I'll talk about this at this point. So at least they put in kind of a list of corrections and clarifications. I'm going to say this one time. I guess that's not bad for a huge game like this to have, how many errors you got there? About 20, give or take. Some of them are minor. Some are fairly major. Some are set up, some are errors with counters, which you can't correct without correcting those counters. I appreciate that they put this in and provided this so that I can play the game as quickly as possible and correctly, but I'll just never understand this. I, I know mistakes are a part of life. I understand that. I just look at this and I'm like, did only one person review these? Did two or three people not go over them? I guess that's the one thing maybe I don't understand. Uh, okay, let's get to the great part. Let's go ahead and get the maps out. I'm going to, this is the northern map. And these maps are huge, so bear with me as I wrestle them and uh, put them out. So th this is a big game, guys. Remember I told you it's a big game, so I'm going to move the camera a little bit, and I'll have to kind of pan it up and down. Uh, but this is not a small game. This is a game that uh, is is played, uh, you know, it's a multi-day game. You're, you're, you're not going to play this in a couple of hours. You're going to have to invest time into this. This is one of those games that's just going to take a long time. So here's a look at the map. Let's start down in the bottom. Remember I mentioned that Caribbean map. So there's a look at it. There is battle and different movements here that will happen down in the Caribbean. So that's actually, this is actually one of the first games that really has devoted this type of a map space regarding the American Revolutionary War. Liberty or Death, if you know, it's one of my favorite games of all time. It has a Caribbean kind of box, but it's not like this. So these have movement lines. Very interesting the way that this is presented and set up. I'll be interested to read about how that works. But here, let's go back and look at the at the map. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. These are the southern colonies. <clears throat> so you have Georgia. Here's Florida down here, not a colony, obviously. Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. You have uh, Virginia here, and it, it, it kind of extends. Actually, that's kind of funky now that I look at it. That's odd. This is Virginia. So Ver is kind of off the map. That's kind of an odd thing. Sorry, just kind of caught me by surprise. I didn't notice that. Uh, here you have more of the middle states, the middle colonies, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New York, um, Maryland, not Maryland, I'm sorry, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, etc. And then up here, sorry, you've got the northern colonies with Nova Scotia, Quebec, Canada uh, shown up there as well. 
So big map. These are two large map sheets. There's even a from Europe box there kind of up in the right. You can see the sea lanes go down, the movements into the ports, different ports are identified. Naval movement is gonna be an important part of this game. Um, but yeah, it, it's hard to get that whole map in the shot. It's, it's virtually impossible. So very nice looking map. I think it's well done. It, it, to me, uh, it, it probably could have been better. Just I'm just gonna say that. Um, tracks up here, different boxes political will uh, events and, and tracks. Here's the turn track over here on the left, extending from 1775 to 1782. Uh, there is, these are boxes for militia in these different areas, the Tidewater, the Middle States, the Deep South. I think that's maybe where you muster them or muster from. I think that's kind of cool. So Really looking forward to this. I really can't wait. There's a political will track at the very top, uh, as well as an action uh, pulses, it says. Okay. So, yeah, that's a look at the map. I think it's a big, gorgeous map. Nice production. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, I would have liked to have seen this maybe been a little more highly produced. I... Uh, I'm not, I'm not saying it's badly produced, but maybe maybe they could have put a little more uh, into this. This To me, this is a big game, probably an important game, showing some of the elements of this period, this time period. And But hey, you know what? Ultimately, what is important is how the game plays. And I'm hoping that it's very good. I'm hoping that uh, it's very enjoyable. And I'm hoping it's a game that we can all get into and enjoy uh, after this year. So that's a look at War for America, the American Revolution from Compass Games, brand spanking new off of Kickstarter. I've had it for about two or three weeks. So I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. We're going to give this a play, a couple of plays maybe. I I'm not sure we're going to play it. Uh, if we can maybe push counters around for four or five hours the first time, then reset it and try to do the full campaign, I will consider that a huge victory for us, um, as that will probably take about three weekends in a row. Um, but that's great. We can do that. I think the game hopefully is good, and, and we'll enjoy that. So anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.